I'm Benjamin Slade, a linguist at the University of Utah. My research concerns semantics, the study of language meaning, and historical linguistics, the study of language change. I'm also interested in the languages of South Asia, so languages like Hindi, Nepali, Singhala, and Malayalam, um, as well as early Indo-European languages like Old English and Sanskrit, and languages of the Caribbean like Jamaican Creole and Rastafari Dread Talk. My research um, generally involves um, formalizing natural language meaning, that is, figuring out precisely um, what certain linguistic elements mean. So that is figuring out exactly what do particular words mean. Um, and investigating as well um, how these different meanings of words, when they're embedded in a structure, that is when you take words and you put them together into a sentence, um, how the meanings of these words then compose to form larger elements of meaning, like meanings of sentences. Um, I also work on looking at how languages change over time, um, what certain factors are for triggering language change, including things like language contact, and so on. Um, historical linguistics is also interested in tracing linguistic relationships, that is, determining which languages are related to which other languages. So, for instance, the, the Romance languages, uh, Spanish, Italian, French, Portuguese, and so on, um, come from Latin, the language of the Romans. Um, but Latin itself um, is more distantly related to other languages, including ultimately English and German, um, as well as languages like Czech and Polish and uh, Nepali and Gujarati and Farsi and Hittite and many others. Um, we can use similar techniques to reconstruct words in unattested languages. Um, so in this case, Proto-European Peku um, can be reconstructed on the basis of the correspondence between words like Sanskrit Pashu, Latin Peku, English Fi, and so on. Um, in terms of uh, specific projects that um, I'm involved in, one of these um, investigates aspectual adverbials. This is a joint project with Dr. Anuka Chirmaz, another linguist here at the University of Utah, and a project which has involved both graduate and undergraduate students here at the university. Aspectual adverbials are words that um, are concerned with the movement of events through time and space. So in English, words like again, still, already, and so on. Um, these words involve or trigger an assertion about something that occurs at one point in time or occurs along, you know, at one point along a scale, and a presupposition about something occurring at another, usually earlier point in time or other point on the scale. Um, so, for instance, the sentence, uh, John is still sleeping, which contains the aspectual adverbial still. Um, so this uh, involves an assertion that John is sleeping now, and it presupposes, that is, it takes for granted um, that John has been sleeping since some earlier point in time. And this assertion, combined with the presupposition, um, when used in, in particular context, can give rise to other elements of meaning. Um, so, for instance, potentially something like an implicature of, and he should wake up now. Uh, still um, is polysemous, that is, it bears a range of different meanings, though the meanings are connected in one way or the other, um, including a temporal meaning, uh, that's like the one we just saw, as in it's still raining, a um, marginality reading, which rather than uh, time has to do with space, so as in something like the city of St. George is still in Utah, though it's close to the Arizona border, a comparative reading, um, as in this book is big, but that book is bigger still, where we're, com where we're looking at not time or space, but rather degrees um, of properties, like bigness. Um, and a concessive reading, as in, I told him not to go, but John still left, where we're comparing um, likelihood of different events. And cross-linguistically, um, aspectual adverbials are interesting in that they're polysemous, and in, 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 in different ways um, than what we just saw um, in, in English, or in, in additionally in, in other ways as well. Um, as we can see in this chart, where we're just looking at the temporal senses um, of, of different um, adverbials in some of these languages, and you can see that a number of these have more than one reading. So for instance, um, Italian um, ancora um, can mean not only again, but also still and already and yet and so on. Um, in Nepali, a peri can mean then or again. These um, adverbials are also interesting from a historical point of view in that um, they often involve um, interesting changes in meaning. So, in English, still, in fact, used to mean always, as an example one. They learned to live as if they were still at the point to die. That is, they learned to live as if they were always on the point of dying. And again used to mean back. You can see this in example two. The God of peace that brought again from the dead our Lord Jesus. That is, that brought back from the dead. Um, or example three, if he did not love me again, he would not have flung his book at my head. That is, if he didn't lo love me back, he wouldn't have thrown his book at me. Um, so. 
for this project, we're interested in um, sort of determining the underlying meaning for these asexual adverbials, um, which should help us to understand sort of why this sort of polysemy can occur and why we get these sorts of um, semantic changes over time. Um, another project um, I'm working on has to do with focus, the semantics of focus, um, where focus is that sort of special stressing of words. Um, but this special stressing of words has semantic consequences. Um, that is, it generates a set of alternatives, alternatives to whatever word is, is stressed, or whatever word or words are stressed, um, which can be accessed by other elements, so words like even. So in a sentence like, um, even John fell asleep, and notice the special prosody on John, even John fell asleep. Um, so this asserts that it's true that John fell asleep, um, but it involves this other meaning component, this presupposition that if you look at alternatives to John, so other salient people, so Mary, Bill, Ted, whoever they might be, um, that the likelihood of John falling asleep is less than that um, of the likelihood of alternatives to John falling asleep. So that is that John fell asleep, and this is sort of unexpected because um, the John is, is less likely than all of these other people to fall, fall asleep, but yet he fell asleep. So um, in collaboration with our, Dr. Archana Bhatia, I'm a researcher at the Florida Institute for Human and Machine Cognition, um, we're developing an algorithm um, to be able to automatically identify um, different types of focus in written texts. Um, another project I'm working on, which also has to do with semantics, but from a different point of view, um, involves looking at word formation processes in Dread Talk, um, a, a linguistic code used by Rastafarians. Um, here in particular, I'm looking at um, a case where there's this transformational process which, which essentially repairs um, words in the case where there's a perceived mismatch between the connotations of the word and the connotations of its component pieces. So for example, um, here in uh, one of Bob Marley's songs, we have the, the lyrics, I got my own in the promised land, but I feel at home, can you overstand? Okay. So overstand, signifying understand, um, has been transformed because um, understand has positive connotations. That is, understanding's a, a good thing. Um, but the component piece under sounds negative. And so to essentially repair this, this perceived mismatch, um, the under is transformed to over. And so we get overstand, where the connotations of the pieces and the word match. So all of these uh, various projects, um, investigating language meaning and language change, um, draw on techniques from different areas of linguistics um, in order to be able to gain deeper insights into complex linguistic phenomena.